Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I can't lie, I've been procrastinating on starting this vlog a little bit. It is currently like Wednesday morning because it's just gone past midnight, but we'll call it Tuesday. But I've pretty much only just recovered from the Bacoplathon. I haven't even edited that footage yet. I have to do that in the morning and to be honest, I'm dreading it because I have a lot. But I need to get this vlog rolling. I'm currently reading three books. I'm not going to tell you about all of them right now because the chances are I'm not actually going to be picking up all of them in this vlog. So I don't want to rattle off three synopses and then not end up talking about them in the rest of the vlog. So the books I'm currently reading, we have Good Me Bad Me by Ali Land. This is on my Bookopoly TBR to read a thriller. And I started this at the end of last week. I'm currently on page 44. We then have The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. This is the third book in the Winter Night trilogy. And I started this on Saturday as part of the Bookopolathon, but I didn't finish it. I got to page 138, which is just under half of the way through. There's like 360 pages in this. So we need to read 50 more pages and I'll be halfway in this. And then we have the book that I've actually been working on this week. I started this on Monday and that one is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is on my Bacopoli TBR. It came up as a chance card pick and I'm also buddy reading this with Starla from Starla Reads. I've just finished my Tuesday section so I'm currently on page 160 of this. I've just got a bookmark to put in it because I haven't been using one. But we do have the days sectioned off here. It works out at about 75 pages per day and that will have us done on Sunday. So I haven't actually read anything else this week aside from 160 pages of this. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday do tend to be my busiest days of the week and then Thursday and Friday is a little bit more chill work-wise. So I haven't had a chance to pick anything up outside of our buddy read sections but I am actually really enjoying this so far. So this book is the first book in the David Bad trilogy. I have not heard a single bad review about this book and it is an adult fantasy that is chock full of Egyptian mythology. So in this book we follow a young woman called Nari and she is a con artist. She has an ability, like an unexplainable kind of magical ability that she doesn't understand where she can heal herself and sense ailments in others. She can also heal minor injuries and minor illnesses like headaches and assist births and things like that but she's never tried to heal anything serious. She also has the ability to pick up any language if it's spoken to her, she hears a few words, she's then fluent in that language. But she is also a con artist so she's kind kind of a psychic I want to say and people come to her with their problems and ask for their futures to be told and to find out whether they have anything wrong with them and if they look rich she will misdiagnose them and send them to her friend who runs an apothecary. So she makes money from giving them the false diagnosis and then her friend makes money from all of the random rubbish that she makes her clients buy and then she also receives a cut of that and she dreams to save enough money to go to I think it's Istanbul where she can properly train in medicine. So this story came kicks off where she is performing something that's kind of like an exorcism and there is this young girl who her mother believes is possessed by an evil spirit or a demon. So Nari begins this ceremony and while she's in the rhythm of it she's really vibing and she starts to sing a song in her native language which she doesn't know how she knows it. She just knows this language and that it's her native language and she she doesn't really understand what it is and through that she summons a very irritable djinn called Dara. Now Dara recognises Nari for what she is which is half gin and demands that she goes to the city of brass so those two start to cross I don't want to say the country cross the world I want to say they're heading east so that he can take her to the city of brass because she is the last member of her family alive so she is the last person to have these healing abilities and language abilities now we do also follow a different perspective in here and that different perspective is in the city of brass and the city of brass is where all of the gin live so they don't live in the human world and the perspective that we follow in the city of brass is a guy called Ali who is a prince and through his perspective we learn that things in the city of brass are not as you may seem because it seems like this magical wonderful city and honestly the descriptions of the city of brass so far have been top notch and super atmospheric and I really love it but there is a lot of discord in the city between the pure-blooded djinn and the half-blooded djinn which are called Shafit and there's this whole argument about whether Shafit should be treated as equal to the full-blooded djinn or whether they are inferior and at the moment the majority of them are being treated as inferior and there's this like rebel uprising kind of thing where the Shafits are trying to gain equal rights. So yeah, 
that, that was a whole lot for a synopsis, but that is the basic plot of this. So we have Nari and Dara heading to the City of Brass and Ali within the City of Brass and what is going on there. I'm really interested in what's gonna happen when Dara and Nari arrive. Because of who they are and the families that they represent and the history of this world and the complications with an ancient war and also what is currently going on with the uprising and all of this current unsettlement in the city, I'm really interested in what's going to happen when they arrive but so far I'm really loving this. I've read it's a little bit not super info dumpy but like Nari doesn't know anything about the City of Brass or the Jinn. She only performs these exorcism ceremonies because she assumed that Jinn and spirits and things didn't actually exist so you'll learn things through conversations with her but I do like the parallel between the two perspectives because you're learning about the history of what happened through Dara telling Nari and you're also seeing the parallels into what's happening in present day because this war was 1400 years ago I believe. I also really like the characters. Nari, I don't want to say she was annoying at the beginning but I didn't love her at the beginning but I could tell that I was going to eventually. She spends the beginning of this book resisting Dara and just trying to escape and not go to the city of Brass but I do like that she's a little bit sassy, a little bit snarky. Dara is so sarcastic and I love how she asks him questions that he regards as stupid because he's not human. I just love being in the city of Brass in Ali's perspective because honestly it sounds like a beautiful beautiful place. I mean terrible with all of the stuff that's going on under the surface but just the architecture of the city seems absolutely amazing. So I've just finished Tuesday's section. Wednesday's section will take me to page 227 and I'm really really excited to continue on with this. But for now I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing. I may pick up one of the other two books that I'm currently reading. So City of Brass or The Winter of the Witch but it is going on for midnight now and I kind of want to go to bed sometime soon because I have a nail appointment tomorrow. My nail tech has finally been able to reopen. I think it was Monday just gone that nail bars were allowed to reopen so I do have an appointment for tomorrow morning when she sent me a message to say that she could reopen. I asked her to just fit me in for whenever she had available because I'm self-employed so like I don't have to go to work or anything like that. I can clear the time to go and get my nails done and she put me in for 9am <laughs> and I've been getting up any time between 8 a.m. and like midday but it's usually between like 10 a.m. and midday like 7 8 a.m. is definitely the rarity so I'm a little bit worried about actually waking up for that but I'm also very excited to have my nails done and I also want to call up tomorrow at some point to get my hair done because it's it's hella long and I think I'm gonna have it cut to like around here so we're losing all this which is a little bit scary but um it definitely needs doing because it's just it's at the point where it's too long and too heavy that it doesn't even look that nice unless it's freshly washed and I can't just like stick it in a bun because it's so heavy it just drags down and then when I do get back from getting my nails done I have my entire book couple of fun vlog to edit which I'm not looking forward to so those are my plans for tomorrow I will come back tomorrow and let you know how my nail appointment went I mean my nail appointment should go fine providing I actually wake up and go to it but but I'll show you my new nails. I'm really excited because I've missed my nails but at the same time there's nothing more satisfying than just having natural nails that you don't have to worry about breaking or chipping and if you want to open something you can just you know like stick your nail in there. So I will miss the freedom of having no nails but I'm excited to have pretty hands again. Hey so I'm currently waiting for my Bacopla Thumb vlog to finish processing. It ended up being a ridiculously long one. Not ridiculously long actually it was 41 minutes but it's now 6pm and it's taken me the entire day to edit that, get the thumbnail, sort out the description box and as I said I'm currently waiting for its process and it's on 0% and it has been for a little while. So as soon as that is processed it will go up finally. I actually think it's a really good vlog when I watched it back. I really enjoyed it so at least there's that but I'm just here to let you guys know that I got my nails done because I told you that I would. I'm wondering if I can get it to focus. Come on. There we go. There we go and then my thumbnail is, I can't is nude. Here's my new claws. Very excited to have nails back. However, I made a rookie error and I got them really long. So on the guide, I went for the small ones, but I know, I know that the small ones aren't actually small. And these are the length that I usually have them when they've pretty much grown out. So using a keyboard, 
is difficult. I'm really struggling with that. I did receive the makeup that I ordered last week today, but I will show you that tomorrow. I was gonna say if you want me to haul it, but you don't really get a say in it because this is the middle of a vlog. But this is the lipstick that I got. This is Saw. And I actually really like the cover. I was a little bit nervous about picking lipstick online, but I think it turned out really well. I'm going to haul the rest of the makeup that I ordered for you guys tomorrow because I'm not wearing any of it because I already had makeup on when it arrived. I feel a little bit silly being like, this is the makeup I wear when I'm actually wearing my cheap makeup because I ran out of the good stuff previously. I do if you had more time. Baby, you always wanted to give me more time. Hey, so I'm just getting ready to film my mid-month wrap-up, which I've actually read quite a lot of books, so I'm not sure how long that's gonna take me. I hope it's not very long, but I thought I would come and check in with you guys because I did promise you that I would show you my makeup haul, and now I'm actually wearing the makeup that I bought, so I feel like I can do it. But first, just a quick reading update because I don't actually have too much to update you on. Everything's fine. The book that I'm predominantly reading is City of Brass still. I'm on page 226 of this. I haven't read any of mine and Starla's section for today. I'm really enjoying this. It's interesting because this book is not how I imagined it would be. The writing, I thought that it would be a lot more poetical, a lot more atmospheric than it is just in the writing style. I was imagining something kind of almost Lainey Taylor-esque, but not, maybe not quite that flowery because Lainey Taylor is like super, super flowery. But I am still definitely enjoying it. And my favorite aspects of this are the atmosphere, the world building, things like that. As I mentioned the other day, there are two different perspectives in here. We follow Nari and Ali, and I like the perspectives <laughs> for different reasons. So with Ali, I prefer the world building and the politics that are going on in that perspective and the little bits of, not necessarily the plot, but I think it is definitely the world building and finding out about the history and the politics of the city of Brass and the Jinn. And then with Nari's perspective, I'm a little bit more interested in the characters. However, that being said, something that I expected to love in here and I'm really not feeling is the romance. Now that is something that I hardly ever say. The romance in fantasy is something that I usually latch onto and it even has a lot of the things that I love in in a romance in fantasy. So we have an immortal warrior, we have a high stakes plot, we have a tortured love interest, and I'm just not feeling it. And I think it's because it's not slow burn enough for me that I'm not really into it. It feels kind of like these two characters are definitely going to have a romance and it's just going to like emerge straight away. Like I said, I'm only 226 pages into this, so I'm not even at the halfway point yet, but it feels like I've read so much. Like it feels like I should be nearing the end of the story, because I just feel like so much information has been given to me, which is a great feeling. And something that I do really enjoy about the way that this book is written is that both Ali and Nari's perspectives are quite different because they're coming from people who have different levels of knowledge, like Nari's from the human world and Ali's from the city of Brass and the world of the Jinn. But I like how the information in each perspective kind of ties to each other without it being overtly obvious. Dara will mention something about a war and then in Ali's perspective you will get like a different view on the war because Dara doesn't want to talk about it too much. He's quite ashamed of what he's done I imagine or it hurts him to think about the things that have happened to his family and the people that he knew. Whereas Ali is looking at it from the perspective of it's just something that happened in pretty ancient history, not for the jinn because they're not necessarily immortal but they live a long time. But it's something that happened historically and it's like part of the history of the city of Brass and it's something that he can look on with a little bit more detachment. So I'm really enjoying how those things are tying the perspective together at the moment. Now last night when I did finish my section of City of Brass, I did pick up The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden and I just read one chapter and I'm kind of mad at where I put it down during Bogoplathon because I really enjoyed this next chapter. So this is an adult fantasy that is heavily inspired by Russian folklore. It is a very slow moving, very atmospheric fantasy series and it is also a coming of age fantasy. So in this trilogy we follow a young woman called Vasilisa and I'm assuming that we're going to follow her up to the age of 18 or 20 I want to say. I think she's 16 or 17 in this book but in the first book we start 
start off when she's very young and Vasilisa is sighted which means that she can see the protective spirits of the forest and the household. Everybody talks about how wild Vasya is. She doesn't behave like a good woman or a good daughter should and everything does start to change when her father remarries because he feels like she needs a strong female presence in the household to teach her how to behave. So when Vasilisa's stepmother comes along she is also sighted like Vasya. However she's also very devoutly Christian and she sees the spirits as demons. So Vasya's new stepmother does bring a priest along with her and the priest starts to convert the people of the town away from the old gods and the spirits and towards Christianity which leaves the town open to attack from malevolent forces. Now the second book is completely different again and focuses a lot on the non-magical politics of this story because in the background we do have a war brewing between Russia and the Tatars? Tartars? Still not sure how to pronounce that um, and that is pretty much what the second book is about and then this one it definitely delves more into the magic again but I feel like for me at the moment this one is a little bit too much magic because it is very it's almost riddle like and Vasya is in a place at the moment where she just left a place at the moment that was very much like an in-between kind of limbo zone that had very peculiar rules and soft magic systems I don't mind but I do like them to be a little bit concrete and it was just a little bit too riddle based for me in that section but now one of my favorite characters has just returned back into the storyline properly and I'm very excited to continue so hopefully I will be able to read some more of that today as well. So my makeup haul I've just put my books on top of it as I mentioned I'm wearing everything that I bought today and guys I finally replenished my foundation and I have missed this foundation so so much. I've lost my makeup. Oh this one. All right okay we got them. So starting with foundation. The foundation that I wear this is my standard foundation. However when I run out sometimes if I don't need to order anything else from MAC I will just go and buy a cheap bottle of foundation to see me over because when I'm buying MAC makeup I do like to make my order a little bit more worthwhile. The majority of the base of my makeup is MAC and has been MAC for a very long time and then things like my eyeshadows, my eyebrows and some of my lipsticks aren't MAC. So I finally replaced my foundation. However, it is in new packaging now. They used to be in glass bottles. The one that I have is the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. And in case you were curious, my shade is NC40, which it is. You can only really see a little bit through the gap of the bottle. It is quite a light foundation considering like how brown my face looks right now but um yeah this is the shade that I've always used when I have a bit of a tan it is a little bit too light but I haven't actually been out in the sun too much recently so that one is still currently fine. I picked up a couple of new things that I don't normally have. My eyeliner has always been MAC but I got a liquid eyeliner this time because it was on a 50% off sale and it has this teeny tiny little brush pen and usually I have a gel eyeliner that I apply with a brush but I fancy trying out a liquid and I'm happy. I'm happy with how this has worked. And this one is the Brush Stroke 24 Hour Liner. I also got a mascara. I don't always have MAC mascara. It depends how I'm feeling, whether I can be bothered ordering it when my mascara runs out. But this one is the Extended Play Giga Black Lash. And this is the brush. Honestly, my eyelashes are kind of short anyway. Mascara is not something that I pay a lot of attention to. If I want my eyelashes to look anything amazing, I have to get extensions or false ones anyway so just any mascara will do pretty much and then the last thing I got was a lipstick which I kind of showed you yesterday but this is a matte lipstick and the shade is saw it is I feel like when I look in the mirror it looks okay here when I look in the mirror it's a little bit more purple toned than it looks on but I am enjoying like the pinky toned brown definitely the shade that I was going for there is like a thing on the MAC website where you can upload a photo or go on webcam and try on the makeup and this color definitely definitely looked a little bit paler, like a little bit more of a darker nude on the website than it does on, but I still absolutely love it. So that was my makeup haul. I'm about to go and film a video as I mentioned and then after that, what am I doing after that? I need to pack candle orders and hopefully I will have time to make a few candles as well. I'm having one of those weeks where I really don't feel organized because my preferred way to work is to dedicate a day to something. So for example, ideally I would be dedicating the entirety of today to making candles and then the entirety of tomorrow to sending candles and then that gets me through my order list a lot quicker. But with having the book off on and my YouTube 
YouTube schedule being thrown out. I'm now working on everything every single day. So today I'm going to film a video and I'll pack candles and then if I have time I'll make candles and then tomorrow I'll edit a video and then pack candles and then make candles. So it's more of a constant flow but less is being done every day if that makes sense and I'm gonna go get on with that now. <laughs> Get around the nose ring. And still, still wearing a lot of makeup. You've like, have you rubbed my eyebrows off yet? I've been trying to rub them off, but it's like trying to win a scratch card. <laughs> it's funny because the vlog doesn't even know I'm drunk. <laughs> it does now. Is it not the under eye? It's I don't the know, it's not my under eye. It's sent down to the under eye. I think he might need another one. You haven't done this. Oh, there's a chin. Yeah. Does chin work? No, get a new one. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Well, that's just not. What's this? Oh. Television. Come on. This isn't. Oh. Where, where am I going? Yeah, right here. That's what we got in the hair, in the sideburns. It's like a, it's like a really weird like point of view. <laughs> it's a pulse. <laughs> I don't want to edit this. I don't want to see this ever again. <laughs> Eat it. Oh You've been in my nose creases. We've been through some. You put makeup in your nose creases. Do I have to bunch it up like that? No, like just wipe right around my nose. No, in my nose creases. Oh, nose creases, not nose holes, nostrils. <laughs> Why did I think nostrils when you said nose creases? I don't know. This is probably the most makeup you've ever had off. Bullshit. Is there any, anywhere you think I've missed? Oh no, I'm looking good. That's why I said the most makeup you've ever had off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bed now. I don't want to let you down It's the only thing I think about every morning You know my life ain't figured out But I promise if you stick around it'll never get boring We'll spend nights with cheap red wine Look at flats even though we can't afford them I don't want to let you down I don't want to lose you now Will you stay? Even when you wanna walk away When times get bad We can learn to love what we have I don't wanna let you down I thought I would come and check in with you. I don't have anything like groundbreaking to say in terms of like books that I've been reading, but I am having a little bit of a reading session today. Let me just turn this on a tad. Ooh. So I'm currently very nearly done with City of Brass. I've just finished today's section. It's only four o'clock. I'm on page 456 of this. Really, really loving this now. I've warmed to the romance a little bit because at one point in this last section that I've just read, it got super angsty and you guys know I love my angst. So I'm really excited to read the last 70 pages of this. The next chapter I'm going to be reading is chapter 26. And I think that something I very much want to read is going to happen in that section. I have also messaged Starla as well to see whether it could be possible for us to actually actually finish that today because that would be awesome. So now I'm going to be going back into The Winter of the Witch. I haven't read any of this since I last checked in with you so I'm up to page 152 and I'm going to probably spend the rest of the day reading some of this. I'm having a little bit of a chill day today for a couple of reasons. One, as you may have noticed from the very strange footage from last night, we had a few drinks. So the original plan is that we were supposed to be going to one of Curtis's friend's house just for a couple of drinks, like a chill Friday night sesh, and they ended up coming here so I didn't even drink 
drink that much but I do I have strong measures and I traditionally drink spirits because it's the only thing that doesn't give me a ridiculous hangover so um I had a few drinks last night I feel absolutely fine this morning I had a slight bit of a headache when I woke up and I feel just very slightly nauseous but I'm not like run down or anything so I'm just really not hungover but I decided that I am going to be spending today doing some reading because of that and then I just wanted a little bit more of a chill Saturday I'm gonna have a few things to do tomorrow making up the last of the candles I need to fulfill all of my orders and also doing some editing so I've decided that I'm gonna take today as a chill day I may work out in a bit but aside from that I'm not doing anything that's too strenuous I'm going to spend my day reading and then I'm gonna watch some TV with Curtis in a couple of hours I do want to wrap this up for you guys tomorrow morning as well like my main goal is to finish this book before I finish this vlog so even if I don't continue with City of Breast today I will be reading the last 70 pages first thing tomorrow and I don't think it's possible because I have a hundred 180-ish pages left of this to read but if I can I may try and wrap this up tomorrow as well like I said I don't think it's possible because that's 250 pages between both of these but uh yeah we'll see how I go hey so it's much later in the day now it's technically not even Saturday anymore it's Sunday morning because it is coming up to 1 a.m I believe yeah but I have just finished the City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. So I ended up giving this four stars and it was like literally because I used the core pile system that was created by G from Book Roast and it was one point away from being a five star read. This is still the best book that I've read this month definitely but this is yet another four star so I haven't had a single five star read this month. In fact all of the books that I've read have been four stars aside from one which was a three star. The problems, not the problems but the things that I enjoyed the least about this I've already talked about in this vlog. I will say that the last 70 pages that I just read were amazing. Like plot twists everywhere. Like the page that I stopped, I was just about to go into a chapter and as soon as I read that chapter, I was like, oh shit. Like things are really starting to hit the fan. I do feel like overall, this is a little bit of a setup book. Like we have a lot of things in here that I would lay in the groundwork for the next two books in the series. Plot wise, it was quite slow. It was very much, like I said, setup book. Becoming acquainted with all of these characters, the world and the political systems happening in here. After after reading the last chapter, the epilogue kind of didn't take me super by surprise. But after reading the last chapter, I'm like, I could go into Kingdom of Copper right now. But I'm not going to because that is a very big book that I would be adding to a TBR when I still have quite a few fantasy books to get to this month. Plot wise, I think that this was really well constructed. S.A. Chakraborty laid groundwork throughout the book that kind of predicted or foreshadowed things that happened later on. Some of the things that were foreshadowed in here, we have not seen the extent of in this book, particularly things that are happening with the character Ali and I'm really excited to see how that's going to come to fruition in the sequels. Pretty much essentially the only reason that this got four stars and not five is because of the romance. Because it's split perspective you're spending half the time with the characters that you would normally so it's not a 50-50 split obviously but if it were we have around 260 pages with each perspective and for a lot of this book those perspectives are in different parts of the world. We're only getting the romance elements through Nari's perspective really and so it does come on quite quickly. I don't feel like I felt it and you guys know me like I'm a sucker for romance so for me to say that I'm not 100% feeling it it's not the best crafted. It does come on quite quickly and then see my stance on romance in fantasy that isn't fantasy romance is that it doesn't necessarily matter if a romance is bad like I can read fantasy books like The Hunger Games that have unnecessary romances in them that are very badly done but this book the plot does hinge on the romance quite a lot and the romance is a driving force between a lot of decisions that the characters are making and because I didn't 100% believe in that romance because I wasn't feeling it I wasn't like I ship this couple till the day that they both die which could very well happen because it's an adult fantasy series I felt that it then undermined the plot a little bit because the things that were happening I didn't 100% believe there was a couple of eye rolly moments in here when characters were doing things for each other and I was like this doesn't feel organic it feels not necessarily forced but not 100% believable so that is pretty much the sole reason this got four stars however by the time we got to halfway to three quarters of the way through the book I did start to get a little bit of feeling for the relationship there's a very angsty moment in here that you know just fed my angsty soul so I do believe that in the next two books in the series I am going to enjoy the romantic aspects of it a little bit more especially with how this book left off but just for the start of the development between these characters I didn't love it 
and it brought the book down a little bit for me. However, if you're looking for a new atmospheric fantasy series to read with a really great plot, like good plot work done throughout the book, that's also super atmospheric and very well written, especially for a debut, then I would recommend that you do pick up The City of Brass because I really, really enjoyed it. So aside from this, I did read just a little bit of The Winter of the Witch where we had some romance going on in here as well. I'm on page 174 of this now. So I'm just about halfway through it actually. I don't think I'm gonna finish this this week because I only have tomorrow and I don't foresee myself being able to do as much reading tomorrow as I did today. Tomorrow I have, as I mentioned earlier, some editing to do and I also possibly want to make some candles if I get time and then I'll do a little bit of reading in between. So sadly, I do not foresee that I will be finishing this this week. I am enjoying it, but still not as much as I enjoyed the first two installments in this series. So once again, this feels like it's going to be a four star read for me and honestly you girl can't catch a break is it me is there something wrong with me this month because of all of the books that i have left in my tbr for the month i think there's only two three technically that have a potential to be a five stars but one of them will be like a pure nostalgia thing like a little bit of a bias rating as opposed to it being like a strictly critical review kind of situation so yeah there's only two books that i have left to read this month that stand a chance of being a five star read so yeah it's not looking good for july quantity wise but quality wise it just ain't quite hitting the bar this month so all of that being said this is actually going to be the end of this vlog i was going to wrap it up tomorrow afternoon but with me saying i have some editing to do in the morning i don't actually think i'm going to have anything else to tell you tomorrow although i do realize that probably because i'm saying this i will end up doing something tomorrow that actually tends to happen i always find things to vlog about when i'm not actually vlogging but i do have to wrap this vlog up sometime before tomorrow night anyway because I, against my better judgment, have decided that I will be participating in the reading rush. I've put my TBR up on my Patreon page at the minute because I just did not have time in my upload schedule to post a dedicated reading rush TBR. I will include it in my vlog on Monday because for the third year in a row I'm also going to be daily vlogging the reading rush. Now this was a very last minute decision on my part. I was in two minds about whether I was going to actually participate at all this year just because I can't be bothered and I found the prompts to be uninspiring. Honestly still find the prompts to be a little bit uninspiring but I do really enjoy the process of daily vlogging and I like that this is one time every single year where daily vlogs are a thing and the whole community gets involved you know but that's pretty much the only aspects that I like about it. The physical process like personally for me of daily vlogging because it's a challenge and it's kind of fun and the fact that it's like this big thing that everybody gets involved in anything else to do with the reading rush I'm not actually too into. I'm not bothered about. I could take it or leave it but yeah you guys know me. I am nothing if not consistent so for the third year in a row we are going to be daily vlogging the reading rush. So I have set a tentative TBR that I may stray from and that is already up on my Patreon page and will be coming in Monday vlog. So because of that, that does mean that this is indeed the end of this week's vlog. I feel like for the majority of this week I've been recovering from and also catching up from Bookoplathon, but I'm really happy that I managed to read both City of Brass and make just a little bit of progress in Winter of the Witch. Winter of the Witch is not in my Reading Rush TBR, but I am going to try and finish it out because I don't think I'll actually have too much left of it by the time the Reading Rush starts. But that is about it guys, so I do hope you enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far. If you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to and I will see you on Monday for the first of my seven daily vlogs in a row. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you will go when nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no